Right now, um, I would like to uh, come to the main presentation here, which is uh, presenting you with uh, our experience at the Military Hospital of Riyadh at the Department of Dermatology. Um, a short notice here about our hospital. This is one of the largest hospitals at its time, uh, at the beginning of its time, it was one of the largest in the Middle East. Um, it is a tertiary care center with over 1,500 beds. Uh, first number of trained physicians we have, first number of trained paramedics, uh, first number of kidney transplanted patients here, the largest and the first center actually in the Middle East it was. Uh, one of two centers for bone marrow transplants. We have the highest number of patient attendees, over almost a million uh, and 700,000 attendees annually. So this is a quite a huge number. Uh, we have a pediatric liver transplant, first and the only center for uh, stereotactic radiosurgery, and so on. And the reason I'm presenting this is just to um, show you uh, how much workload we, we suffer here. We started uh, our lasers in the Department of Dermatology December 2009 and it's um, the great effort, effort of our director of dermatology, this uh, brave young man who brought, who, who brought these uh, lasers, although I have been uh, well before that trained, I mean, I've been sent by this hospital to train as a subspecialist in lasers years before we started this service. So thanks to him, Dr. Abdelhan Zoman. Um, we have an annual number of patients visiting the dermatology department since 2008 until this year. I got you the average and the number is on the rise. We see 33,000 patients per year. The total number of patients treated in our laser uh, department since December 2009 was 870 patients, mounting to only 1.3% of the total number of patients um, visiting the Department of Dermatology. And the reason for this is we are just crawling now. Hopefully in the next few years we will, we will be um, having uh, an expansion of this laser unit and uh, uh, a wider variety of lasers will be used. Um, I'm just mentioning the number of patients under my care represent 60% mounting to 523 uh, patients. Age ranges I have treated with my colleagues, uh, the wonderful people who actually do more work than I do, range between 14 and 77 year olds. Uh, skin types we've treated from skin type 2, as we do have expatriates, European ones working in our hospital, so we did treat them. Uh, up, um, and skin type 6, we have treated also here uh, with our lasers. We have only two machines, unfortunately, now, but as I said, we are uh, planning to expand this. We've got the NDAG and a Q-switched Alexandrite lasers. The first one, uh, has um, we use them for uh, different skin conditions as well as the second one. I'll just uh, shortly enumerate the numbers of patients and their distributions with regards to uh, the presenting pathologies. Uh, we have received 430 patients with diagnosed as hirsutism, representing almost 50% of patients. So you see how common this problem is here. Um, hypertrichosis, 15 patients, telangiectasia, 19, pseudophilicitis, we treated five, and more of freckles at 282. We have some, some of my colleagues have treated post-inflammatory hypermelanosis, which I personally don't treat with lasers because of the uh, expected complications as uh, worsening of the pigmentation. We have melanocytic nevi, nevus of ODA 3, uh, these are uh, all non-Saudis, all three patients. Uh, we have treated lentigens, <coughs> tattoos, Becker's nevi, we had nine patients, cafe au lait macules, pyelonidal sinuses, 
uh, referred from the surgery units. We have uh, hair flaps, skin flaps, referred to us by our colleagues from the Department of Plastic Surgery here. I've treated three patients and uh, a, a wide variety of nevi here representing probably the um, nevus spilus and other forms. This is one of my patients which I've treated for, um, as you can see, um, I would not elaborate on the, um, the reasons for, because we all know the, the reasons of her um classified, but I'll just mention that many of the patients have had uh, proven polycystic ovary disease uh, by ultrasound and clinical examination as well as bloods. We have nine patients who are under treatment for infertility for that. Uh, many patients, as we see, the, this is one of the patients with, uh, this is a young woman who's uh, only um, 19 who presented with, uh, as you say, uh, as you see, uh, very long hair in the face. Uh, I have had photos as well for the, her presentation. You can see that she has a clear beard there. Uh, she did have, an, at other sites involved, she had the periareolar uh, hair, the center of the chest, linea alba, it's, it's all involved with terminal hairs. This is another patient of ours who's been referred from the um, uh, renal unit, uh, who's on cyclosporin for renal transplant, and uh, as you say, that uh, uh, the, the reason for this was uh, the intake of cyclosporin, so uh, we have quite a, a lot, lo large range of pathologies we see here. Uh, this is another patient who has um, only actually obesity. She, she's not proven to have polycystic ovary disease. She's obese, so she's classified as um, a patient with um, um, a, a, a hypertrichosis or uh, hirsutism, I, I should say, uh, due, secondary to obesity. She's diabetic, and uh, as you see, she has um, acne as well as uh, 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 hair, and the same patient lying. Um, this should be presented um, afterwards. And the reason I'm showing you this slide is just to um, uh, elaborate on the method of treatment. We treated these patients, all of the, our hirsute and hypertrichosis patients with the nd -YAG. It's a long pulsed uh, laser at 1064. This is the safest machine, I believe, that should be used on our skin types. Um, uh, the reason is, as we mentioned again from our first colleague, saying that longer pulse waves are much safer with darker skin types. So thanks for people who have selected this machine for uh, our department. And to uh, just a, a tool of me as to learn how, if the patients are responding, that I use is, uh, um, if this could be magnified, I don't know if you see it, uh, I'm just trying here to show you that after treatment or treating the area, uh, you could see the uh, perifollicular edema indicating the success of treatment because I've seen so many patients not responding to treatment, and the reason is the under treatment actually. You do not, we do not observe perifollicular edema indicating the um, hair, uh, complete hair destruction of the hair follicle. Uh, this is the same thing after treatment. Um, this is the second, the second countless pathology we see here, and that is um, uh, freckles. This is post-treatment, actually. It turns gray. These are um, superficially um, uh, pigmented uh, lesions. We all know what freckles are, and it seems to be quite common here, probably genetically determined, because we, we see it in, in certain groups of people. And this is what you see, you see after treatment. Uh, for this, we, we have a Q-switched, as I mentioned at the beginning, a Q-switched uh, Alexandrite uh, machine, uh, which actually works pretty well. And patients usually are satisfied. They do clear uh, from uh, a third session. Some patients with minimal lesions clear after the first session, and we don't see them again. What happens is uh, these turn a little bit reddish with a uh, reddish with a, uh, a grayish uh, center. Uh, in a week's time or in, in three days' time, they would fall, form a black scab, and in a week's time, these would peel off. Uh, third group we treated are the um, tattooed patients, and we have 
many, many patients coming, especially from the northern part of Saudi Arabia, where probably this thing is tribal. And um, uh, the problem with our treated tattoo patients is that most tattoos are amateur, meaning that they're not done pro by professionals. Um, the inks used are unpredictable, so the responses are unpredictable as well. Uh, I have, I must admit, I have had uh, two patients who developed fibrosis at the area treated, and we have we treated one of them with fractional laser, and she has improved. Uh, so as you can see, the um, this is how it looks like after the first treatment, and this is uh, one of my follow-up patients. Uh, it's about 80 to 90 percent of her tattoos disappeared. This is another guy, darker skin. We're treating with the Alexandrite, Q-switch Alexandrite for his amateur tattoo. He has received a previous uh, treatment session. This is the second one, and as you can see, the first one was actually only half of it treated, not the whole thing. And um, we observe patients, if they do show some response, we just carry on. And again, it's, uh, at an average of about three to four sessions, most tattoos disappear. I've had only a couple of patients with uh, professional tattoos, and they were on the eyebrows, just changing the shape of their eyebrows, and they have responded very well to treatment without any problems or complications. The third, the, the, the following um, case presentation, the, the following um, patient is actually um, treating the um, facial telangiectasias. I have had many slides, but actually this is the most, uh, the, the clearest one I have. This, as you can see, this is a, the, the dilated vessel there, superficial one. This is immediately after treatment. You can see it disappearing. This patient came a month later, and she was still free. Um, she had other lesions, lesions on the face which were treated and on her legs, and she has had a good response from the first session. We hardly ended up with any pigmentation following treatments because we're careful with our uh, parameters of treatment. This is one of my oldest patients. The, she, she's above, she's about 77 year old uh, teacher, retired teacher, who presented with, um, uh, and I thought she was cute, requesting, um, you know, uh, to look beautiful at this age. She had a very good spirit. She had multiple lesions, actually. I've treated also ones on her legs. Uh, this is the, 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 the very clear one, as you see it there, completely cleared after just one treatment session. This is a Becker's Nevis, and um, we've given a trial. This patient has responded. You can see that this, this was the um, first treatment session. Immediately after treatment, we, they developed pigmentation. Again, treated with a Q-switched um, Alexandrite. This is an epidermal nevus. I'll, I'll try to go very quickly. Uh, treated uh, with the Q-switched Alexandrite, improved, and I suppose that when, in the future when we have the uh, permanent fractional laser, such patients should improve with fractional laser more than just treating the pigmented areas. This is a burn patient. I'll go to uh, the... Um, the next, uh, the following slides you will see are for patients uh, who were treated temporarily. We had uh, two types of fractional lasers uh, with us. Each um, was used for only a couple of months, unfortunately. We're looking forward to purchasing permanent uh, fractional laser machines. Uh, we had a variety of presentations uh, referred from plastic surgery and from other departments. Uh, one of those was, this is one of the severest cases we had, and this was a burn scar, which nothing can, could be done by the plastic surgeon, so they referred the patient to me, and this is what she had, very bad scar. You could see the um, fractional laser spots there. There I will show you. A few months later, after she received the three treatments, two with the erbium yag, and one with the CO2 laser, and I'll show you how she um, improved. This is later presentation. You can see the scarring that has improved afterwards. Much, much. It's about 60%, 50-60%. She's very happy with the result. Next pathology, and the commonest of all, is the acne scarring. You can see how severe. No one can treat such scars except with a fractional laser. These are ice pick scars. We see a variety of uh, acne scars. Uh, ranging from the ice pick, which are the most difficult to treat, uh, to the um, box scar and rolling scars. 
again, this is the same patient after we treated him, or under treatment actually, with a fractional laser. This guy has received um, two sessions and he has shown, uh, sorry, three sessions and he's shown good improvement. He still needs to be treated though. Uh, this is another patient of mine with uh, acne scars. We treated her as well. They, they actually need to be followed up. Um, the uh, the, the um, other uh, part which I would like just to mention very shortly because these again, both lasers are still not available but we're looking forward to possessing those uh, two machines is the Exymer laser. We've treated 118 patients with vitiligo and psoriasis. To be honest, I am not pretty sure about the uh, significant results that we have observed here but many of the patients were not so much satisfied with vitiligo. I would like to hear the experience of Dr. Laysa if he's here. Um, the settings of the methods, we usually take history and physical examination of the patient, we do review the investigations, uh, patients are informed about the procedure to be performed and the consent is obtained, uh, the device used for hair um, reduction, as I said, and telangiectasia was the NDI 1064 nanometer pulsed uh, with a continuous dynamic cooling uh, device attached to it. It's a quite safe for darker skin individuals, and then the, the next one is the uh, Q-switched Alexandrite for pigmented lesions. Performing the procedures, safety measures I won't mention, I was going to say uh, a lot about this, but we have uh, heard it from, the, uh, from our German colleague on the first lecture, and we did hear from her also with regards to patient preparation and protection and safety and so on. Um, the laser hair treatment sessions ranged in our patients from four to eight sessions. Some of them came a month and others have received uh, three month follow appointments due to the crowdedness, the, the busy clinic, although the, the proper way is to, sh to see them within eight weeks actually. Telangiectasia, the success rate was observed after one to three sessions, one month apart, tattoos, We've treated black, blue, and green. Unfortunately, we don't have the other uh, way uh, links available to treat the red and yellow, but we don't see them anyway here. Uh, several sessions are usually required. Complications, most viewed complication with hair removal was hyperpigmentation as observed with many patients. I must admit we don't exceed the normal range of one to two percent of patients. Uh, developing post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. I must elaborate here that the pigmentation is not always due to the use of high fluences, but sometimes it's due to the cooling system itself, used, the continuous uh, the, the, uh, cooling device. Most of the complication of freckles was hypomelanosis, and this is very interesting because I would expect it to be hypermelanosis, but in our population, a lot of patients come uh, a, a few weeks, uh, well, not more than three weeks after treatment with whitish spots which normally go back to their uh, uh, natural skin color within a couple of months. Thank you very much. These are all very well-known techniques, I must admit, yes. It's they do exist, but, but very bad, bad, bad scars. Yeah. What I do is for the very bad deep scars, as, as, I, as you said, I, I've never used, I've seen it performed, but I've never used the uh, hunt graft techniques. What I do is subcision. Uh, it's very well recognized, very simple to perform technique. <coughs> non harmful <coughs> well, and it's an ex it gives really excellent results. And I finish up with fractional laser at the top. But due to um, probably, of course, this is this is, this is very it. extensive. Exactly. I mean, I mean, this is the beauty of, of lasers. This is, I mean, fractionated lasers. You have very short downtime, <coughs> very good re response, and um, the, the skin that you observe uh, following treatments is amazing. It's just back to normal. I've seen one of your scars in patients which use type 1 and type 2 skin type. They get good results. But some of them, there's a little bit of hyperpigmentation. Uh, I did mention that. 
Now, we have, we have to compare uh, our, our, our lifestyle to the, to the Western type. We're not the same as, as they are. We, we don't sunbathe. How many patients do you see here sunbathing? But it's hardly, yeah, I mean, please. But the skin type is very sensitive to ultraviolet radiation. Any mild trauma. Of course, so I, I agree with you. Yes, of course, the, the, this is true. But I, I mean, post-treatment uh, complication, uh, I found most patients usually um, having the complications from the treatment immediately rather than the post-treatment, meaning that the hyperpigmentation is due to either using high fluences using the wrong spot size with non-compatible fluids, meaning giving, delivering to high energy to the treated area, or uh, with some of the lasers available, not all, the, this continuous uh, dynamic cooling device is very traumatic for the skin. And these are the main reasons for the hyperpigmentation. I was asking about the subcision. You see, you do subcision and then uh, you do laser. Exactly. When? The time. When? As I the said, same once. Same no, 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 no. Never, never the same setting. No. You do the subcisions. You do several from four to six, seven uh, subcision sessions, two weeks apart. Two weeks. Two weeks apart. You, you have to give time because the idea of subcision is not only to lift up the skin, but by inducing trauma and bleeding. You are inviting local inflammatory cells, platelets, plasma, all these goodies in there would help in regenerating the needed uh, uh, cushion under the skin. You will observe it yourself. After repetition, you will have good volume under the skin. I'm doing the fractional laser as the end touch once I'm convinced that this is the best that it could be achieved. I do fraction laser to improve the texture, the appearance of the skin. So what about filling? You do this subcision and then fill it. It depends on the shape of your scar. The filling is not always required. I do it, but not for everyone. When you have large defects, you will need a filler. And it, when you Smaller do it, ones, you don't. Yeah, when you do it, when you will put that laser after? No, you have to do the lasers before. No, once you improve the texture, because you have to pay attention that doing fractional laser would help in remodeling of your filler. It will move. So it's advisable, and if you do that, if you do a filler before, and you, you remember or you, you wanted to do a laser, you have to leave at least again two weeks before no, you do that. Yeah, look, I'm thinking about using this filler as a, um, a cushion to make this research. So it will be uh, better to use laser on a research skin, not a depression. Uh, I, I don't get to your point. The point is that, you know, you would like to laser is yeah. just to improve the skin. Doing laser on this, the breast one yeah. no, you will don't. not get the same no, 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 breast. No, no, no. You, but you when you level, to, level no, the you skin, level it, yeah. you level it first, and then you do the laser. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Rafaya. My question about the hyperpigmentation following hair treatment. What is the recent advance in the treatment of that case, and is the laser has a role in that case? Does the laser have a role yeah. in the pigmentation? Of course. In the pigmentation following hair treatment. Yes, of course. I mean, if you go high with uh, if you go high with your fluids, and fluences usually, there is a very important point that most uh, young doctors don't pay attention to is the relationship between the spot size and the fluids delivered. No, no, I mean, Wait. excuse me, I mean, is the laser, the laser has a role in the treatment of that case? So we can treat this case by treatment modalities, including laser? Treatment modalities, no, I don't treat them with lasers again. No, we don't treat them with lasers again. We, we use them usually, we treat them, well, first of all, most of them, they subside spontaneously. Most of them. You don't do anything. You could give a little bit of a peel with hydroquinone. Some patients, some doctors believe that giving a patient hydroquinone immediately after treatment, the treatment laser for whether hair or whatever helps in reducing the pigmentation. I do not follow that because I do not anticipate problems unless they appear. Why not to treat post inflammatory hyperpigmentation or even plasma on type 3 and 4 with fractional laser? 
if there is with chemical peels or even any other okay. dermabrasion. Fractional, something. I've treated exactly. many, many, many patients with fractional laser for melasma. Four months, four to six months after the situation of treatment, melasma comes back. So the message here, melasma never responds to anything. Melasma very easily complicated by laser. Also, the patient touched and the nose is other uh, pigmentary disorders. Why not? If you don't have other choices, let's say that I will use chemical peels, I will use uh, dermabrasion. You can do that. Uh, you, you can do whatever modality of uh, post pigmentation therapy you desire. You could do it. I mean, I, I'm not, not against that. Look, why not fraction? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not so deep, the pigment, unless it's persistent. If, if you see the patient and he still has, or she has the hyperpigmentation following laser hair removal for the past six months, not responding to anything, then I did. I did treat patients with chemical peels, with depigmented bleaching preparations, with fraction and laser. You can do that. But I'm talking about the simple post-treatment pigmentation, which is extremely common. It disappears spontaneously. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to, uh, I to ask Tura if she has tried already a combination uh, of uh, two therapies using uh, Q switch it in the egg uh, together with erbium uh, fractional or CO2 fractional in uh, treating melasma. Have you tried something like that? Uh, no, melasma, I don't like to touch it with laser at all. Because of, this is how I was trained in Germany. Melasma always gets worse. No matter what type of skin. No matter what type of skin, it always gets worse.